WSDL is an XML format for describing network services as a set of endpoints operating on messages containing either document-oriented or procedure-oriented information. The operations and messages are described abstractly and then bound to a concrete network protocol and message format to define an endpoint. Oxygen XML Editor is offering a way to edit the WSDL files that is similar to editing XML with Content Completion Assistant, outline and validation driven by a mix of WSDL and SOAP schemas, resource hierarchy, resource dependencies, refactoring actions, and WSDL documentation. As a practical exercise, we'll create a WSDL document from scratch to describe the format of the messages exchanged between a server that contains news bulletins and its clients. We are interested in getting a list of top stories as well as a particular story. Our test server offers two operations. The first one is get top stories, which returns breaking news depending on a given news category. Its operation input is a specific news category and its output is a sequence of objects containing information about a story like category, story ID and the story headline. The second operation is get story, which requests the actual content of a story. As input, the operation takes the story ID and as output, the operation returns the story ID, title, language, content, source, publish date and category. To describe this web service, we need to define the following components. XML schema components, which describe the messages structure, messages which describe the data being exchanged between the web service providers and consumers, port types which define the abstract operations that can be performed by a web server, bindings which specify the message format and protocol details for a web service, and services to define the ports supported by a web service. Now we'll start creating the WSDL file from scratch using one of the Oxygen templates. First, we set the target namespace attribute to define the namespace of the WSDL component's definition. Also, we set the value of the WS prefix to the same namespace value. Now we need to create the input and output elements which describe the structure of the messages exchanged between server and client to get an article content from the server. To define these elements, we need to create an internal XML schema with the same target namespace. Now we'll add the getStoryInput element which contains the story ID element used for identifying a particular story. Note that Oxygen's Content Completion Assistant automatically detects the editing context and displays proposals accordingly. In this case, only XML schema elements are shown. Also, note that for each proposal, the application displays the associated documentation. Next, we define the elements needed to describe the format of the message that the server sends back to the client. First, we define the element which contains information about the news story. Then, we define the getStoryOutput element which wraps the story element. Note that the Content Completion Assistant proposes all the defined elements when we edit the value of the ref attribute. Similarly, we add the header element, which defines the user and password information needed for server authentication. Now it's time to create the WSDL messages which describe the data being exchanged between the web service providers and consumers. First, we add the getStoryInput message, which contains two part parameters, 
one for each parameter of the web services function. Again, the Content Completion Assistant is ready to provide elements previously defined in the document. In the same way, we use the Content Completion Assistant to define the message representing the output of the Get Story operation. After we create the messages, the next step is to create a port type which defines the abstract operations that can be performed by the web server. Now we create the get story operation. This is a request response operation, which means that the service receives a message and sends back to the client a response. Note that when we edit the value of the message attribute, the Oxygen Content Completion Assistant proposes the messages which are already defined. To define the messages format and the protocol details for an operation which is described by a particular port type, we need to input a binding for that port type. In our case, we will define the binding for the newsfeed soap port type. Next, we will specify the details for the soap protocol by adding the soap binding element. Note that the Content Completion Assistant helps you to input specific binding extensions for the following protocols and message formats. SOAP 1.1, SOAP 1.2, HTTP GET and POST, and MIME. The SOAP binding element indicates that the binding will be made available via the SOAP protocol. The style attribute indicates the overall style of the SOAP message format. Now, let's define the binding information for GetStory operation as follows. The SOAP body binding element provides information on how to assemble the different message parts inside the body element of the SOAP message. And the SOAP header element specifies what data is transmitted inside the header element of the SOAP envelope. In the final step, we have to create a service element to define the ports supported by the web service. For each of the supported protocols, there should be one port element. In our case, we define the newsfeed service and the newsfeed service SOAP port for SOAP protocol. The SOAP address is used for assigning an address, more specifically an URI, to a port. A port using the SOAP binding must specify exactly one address. Following the same steps, we edit all components which define the getUpStories operation. The input and output elements The input and output messages The operation in the port type section and its implementation in the binding section. Up to this point, we used extensively the Content Completion Assistant to highlight its importance in editing WSDL documents in Oxygen XML. The Content Completion Assistant offers a list of proposals according to current editing context. For example, when we edited the internal XML schema, the Content Completion displayed only XML schema elements and references to XML schema components. Content Completion Assistant helps you to input specific binding extensions for the following protocols and message formats. SOAP 1.1, SOAP 1.2, HTTP GET and POST, and MIME. Content Completion Assistant proposes references to the defined components when you edit attribute values. For example, when you edit the type attribute of a binding element, the Content Completion Assistant proposes 
all the defined port types. For each proposal that the Content Completion Assistant offers, Oxygen displays a short text description. Another tool which can help you in developing WSTL documents is the Outline View. Oxygen offers a specialized WSTL outline which displays all the defined components – services, bindings, port types, messages and XML schema components – from the current document. Different icons are used for each component type, so you can easily identify them. Currently, the displayed components are presented grouped by their type. For example, the XML schema components are presented in the Types category. You can change the grouping criteria from the Settings menu of the Outline view. As you can see, there are available two more grouping criteria – Location and Namespace. You can also look for a specific component using the filtering capability of the Outline view. When you do not know the exact name of a component you are looking for, you can extend the search by using the asterisk or question mark wildcards. As you already noticed, the outline content and the editing area are synchronized. When you select a component in the outline view, its definition is highlighted in the editing area. Also, when you change the caret position in the document, the outline will select the WSDL component accordingly. Another feature essential when you edit a WSDL resource is the document validation, which conforms with the WSDL specification. As an example, let's change the name of the message getStoryInput to getStoryInputMessage. As you can see, the automatic validation already kicked in and highlighted the errors in the document. Also, we can invoke the validation on request with all the errors reported in detail in a separate view. And this concludes our demonstration. Thanks for watching.